Okay, so let's write out two bid rent functions. One for uh, low income households and one for high income households. So first for low income households, R, which is a function of D, is equal to, and now we need to pick a number for agricultural bid rent, and it doesn't really matter what we pick, so let's choose, how about 2,000 plus, and let's use the same numbers that we just uh, looked at, times B minus D. Now, we're going to need to choose something for B, and we don't know what it is yet, but it's going to depend on what the the value of B is for the high income uh, households and I'll show you how we're going to choose that. So let's write out the same thing. So agricultural bid rent is the same for both. That doesn't change. And let's use the numbers that we know are going to deliver the result that we want. Times B minus D. Okay. Now these ratios here are going to give us the slopes of our lines and so this the slope of the line for for uh, the low income households is going to be 500 and the slope of the line for the high income households is going to be 120 so the low income households are going to have a steeper slope and that's exactly what we uh, predicted in our graph the low-income households have the steeper slope and the high-income households have the shallower slope and what that means is that we can get some uh, it gives us a clue about how we can choose B so B is just the distance if we if we just consider um, maybe I'll, I'll use purple to match it up here if we just consider low-income households by themselves and said that that was that's the uh, bid rent function for low-income households then this point right here would be B and if we just consider high-income households by themselves so this is a shallower slope then I haven't I put the, uh, the agricultural line a bit higher but not on purpose okay so this would be B and because this line is shallower this B is going to be farther out than this B so we know that we have to choose the numbers such that the B in the equation for high income households is farther out than the B in the equation for low-income households, the border between the city and the agricultural area. So we're just going to choose two numbers that makes that true. And it's not terribly important what they are, but let's see what we get if we choose. So this will be 550 divided by 0 0.1, right? And let's choose, so this will be close, close to the city center so let's try 5 minus D and just expanding here we get 500 times 5 that's uh, 2500 minus 500 D right and then that equals 4500 minus 500 D so I've just added these two together. So that's our that's our bid rent function for the low income households right here. Now let's continue on with the high income households. So we have 2000 plus 60 divided by 0 0.5. We said that was 120. And now we need to choose something for B and it's a little bit farther out. Let's just choose something that's a bit uh, more than five but still manageable how about um, how about 10 minus D okay so 2000 some equal signs in there 2000 plus 1200 minus 120 D 
and that equals, we'll add these two together, so that's 3200 minus 120D. And that is the bid rent function for high income households. All right, so now let's see if we've, if we've basically done what we need to do. When D is equal to zero, this portion of the equation is equal to zero, right? 120 times zero is equal to zero. So all we have at, uh, at D is equal to zero is 3,200. So that means that households at the city center are willing to bid 3,200, whereas households uh, or uh, low-income households at the city center are willing to bid 4,500 um, for an acre of land. So that's exactly what we predicted in our graph we have that low-income households are bidding more than high-income households at the city center so that makes sense uh, but it still might seem odd that the low-income households are paying more how is that possible and uh, and how can they afford it well as it happens these are uh, bid rent functions for the groups overall and not for individual households so these are these are uh, 4,500 is the amount that is bid by low-income households as a group for an acre of land, and 3,200 is the amount that high-income households bid as a group for an acre of land, but uh, the individual households aren't actually occupying a, a whole acre of land. So what are they occupying and what are they paying? Well, low-income households are bidding 45 hundred as a group but they're only occupying a tenth of an acre right that's what we said L was equal to so if we multiply those two together we see that low-income households an individual low-income household at the city center is only paying four hundred and fifty dollars um, per month or, or whatever sort of time period this is um, whereas high-income households are paying thirty two hundred or would be paying this is what they're willing to pay they want half an acre, and so that is 1600 So as you can see, as a group, low-income households are paying more, um, but individually, they're paying less. So that's how we can come to that result. That's, that's why it makes some, uh, some sense. And that's all due to that assumption that considering this fraction, the value uh, or the lot lot size effect dominates the value of time effect. And by the way, that assumption can be reversed. You can you can take the other view and say that uh, say that the value of time effect dominates the lot size effect as income in increases. That's entirely possible as well, and it might be uh, more in keeping or more consistent with um, with other cities where where higher income households tend to um, dominate the city center um, instead of uh, say the suburbs so you can change that assumption and uh, and get a different result if you want but ultimately that assumption um, has to do with which group has the comparative advantage in um, in essentially in opportunity cost and, and travel travel time uh, so our assumption is basically saying that um, low-income individuals are better able to, sh to uh, or rather low-income individuals care more about transportation costs relative to lot size compared to high-income individuals. Okay, I'm out of time, but hopefully you've learned something useful and uh, this concept has started to make sense.